Hello and welcome to the vlog. It is another absolutely stunning day. My 48 hours mooring, for that is all you get at the end of the Ashby, is almost at an end. And also at the time of filming this, it is just over a week to the Crick Show, which I will be attending, and I'll be putting the boat back in the marina again while I'm uh, away for a couple of days at Crick. So I need to start heading back the way I came. And that, first of all, meant doing a 180 degree turn at the big winding hole at the end, which luckily I did without any dramas. Then, with the sun beaming down gloriously once more, it was another chance to travel this most amazingly green stretch of canal. Such a lovely day, and although I am often a grumpy old man, on this day I very much counted my blessings. There's Snarestone Tunnel again, and again you have to get over to the right to be able to see through it clearly and whether anything's coming the other way because this is a half-duplex tunnel, travel permitted both ways, but only one way at a time. And that's because you have to go in the middle for this very low bit at the end, so you don't want to meet anything coming the other way. It's all well signed as usual, and it's not a long tunnel. Just on the south side is this nice spot, which if I hadn't just set off I'd have moored at for a bit. I was seeing plenty of new life on the water. This was filmed mid-May. For people who said, why can't we hear the engine noise anymore? It's because I've got a new stereo sound recorder up front and this really is a much more accurate recording of how it sounds if you're sitting in the bow. Lots more birdsong, lots less engine. Who knew Belinda Carlyle was a canal boater, eh? She must have been here. Coming up to those unusual moorings at Shackerstone, where the sheep mingle with the boaters. But before we see them, more new babies. Legend says the sheep own this land and command the moorers to shear them regularly in return for the right to leave their boats here. It's at times like this I wish I was sitting in the bow with someone else driving so I could sip on a cold drink, relax and attain a state of zen. I had been planning to travel for three hours or so, but dang it, it's my timetable and I fancied stopping here as it was such a nice spot. So an executive decision was made and I pulled the boat in to pause for a couple of days. This was to be my view, such a nice location. A few days later and I was off again, past this very interesting boat which appears to have a cabin top entirely made of wood. That's unusual as narrowboats are normally steel. I think the hull here is metal 
but above the gunnels it's all wood. And what's more, it seems like this was once an unpowered butty by the looks of that tiller, now presumably converted with an engine. Other interesting local sites included farmers spreading what I presume from the pong was manure on the fields. It was a shame the sun had disappeared, mind you. The other question I'm always getting from viewers is whether boaters greet each other. Yes, we almost always do, but not until they've drawn their stern alongside mine, which means they'll have gone well past the bow camera before we wave, which is why you never see it. We'll be saying hello about now, I reckon. Look at all this crud in the water. I do applaud the CRT cutting back vegetation, but it always ends up in the water, either clogging round your prop or ultimately silting up the canal. There must be a better way. Yes, the sun had definitely disappeared by this point. But it wasn't raining, and just here I had the absolute pleasure, by luck more than judgement, of hearing this. It's the Battlefield Line Heritage steam train running alongside the canal, which I just managed to get a shot of. Later, moored in Market Bosworth again, I took this phone footage of it at the station. You may recognise this spot from the trip up. It's Market Bosworth, and whereas before I moored on the south side, this time I wanted to squeeze in here. That's if I could find a spot, so slowly past these boats looking for a gap. And as luck would have it, just before the bit where you have to pay the marina an overnight charge, there was a lovely space. Though be warned, some of the armco had metal bolts sticking out which would scratch your paintwork, so I went past those. After a pleasant couple of days here at Market Bosworth, it's another sunny day and so I will press on a little bit, probably do a couple of hours and get almost but not quite to Trinity Marina and then I'm booked in for tomorrow so I'll just do that final bit tomorrow morning. When I came along this bit on the way up, it was chucking with rain. This time it was lovely. Lots of traffic around on the trip, due to the nice weather I suppose. Here's an example where I'd just been past one boat, and as I turned for this bridge, there's another. The good thing about narrowboating is that there is plenty of time to react. I just hung back a fraction, let them out, and then I could take my turn.
Today's video is clearly all about wood, because this armco is unusual in having wooden beams along the edge of the metalwork, instead of the aluminium ones that are more often used. Unfortunately, it looks like this is quite old and falling apart, as you can see. I don't know if it's obvious from the footage, but the shallowness of this canal was apparent here, because as I pulled over slightly to give this other boat some space, I felt the bottom of the boat rubbing on the silt, and in fact listing to the left as I went along. It's always unnerving, but the worst that'll happen is you get stuck. Up ahead is Sutton Wharf, just where the canal widens before that bridge. And on the left here, you can see the 48-hour visitor moorings, which I decided to stop at. Amazingly, there was no one here, although it got busier later. It is an absolutely lovely place, and if I could buy this patch of land outright and have it as my mooring, I jolly well would. You're out of the way of passing boats, there's water and toilet disposal at the wharf, and fields on either side. I wish I could have stayed longer than two days. Although it's called Sutton Wharf, it's really a cafe, not a wharf, and a nice place for a cuppa and cake. Go under the bridge heading south, and there's a long line of canal and river trust moorings, which are almost as nice as the visitor moorings I'd just stopped at, so if ever one of these comes up, I might seriously be tempted. Here I confused the poor bloke behind me. He'd been catching me up, so I pulled over to the right, stopped and waved him past, which I don't think he saw. And as I waited, the wind pushing sideways blew my boat back into the middle of the canal. So now I just looked like an idiot sitting in the way. I waved him frantically past again, and he was kind enough to ask if I needed any help. No, I said uselessly, I thought you might just like to come past. He looked baffled but carried on, and I felt like a right twit. And now I had to creep gently along so as to open up a gap between us. A good deed never goes unpunished, so they say. That is one heck of a solid tunnel lamp quadrupod. See on the left of this bridge, there's a little box halfway up. It's a bat box, I think, some kind of wildlife conservation thing. Onwards and southwards, towards and past the village of Stoke Golding. I think that's the spire of the St Margaret of Antioch Church. I'm in two minds about boats with the cabin space extended over the bow. Great extra space inside, a lovely forward bedroom perhaps, but you do lose the well deck. Tricky. Hey, there's the boat with the smiley face on its back again. Going past the Ashby Canal Centre.
and here I've just gone under Bridge 23, where that well-renowned canal-side farm shop is based. This time round I thought I'd make a quick stop. It wasn't the sunniest day, but I fancied an ice cream. You can't really miss the shop if you stop here. It's over in those buildings. Apparently though I was there on the wrong day. Fridays are best, when it's rammed with fresh produce. This was merely a small selection. Being cheap, I ended up with a Magnum knockoff, which actually tasted perfectly nice. Off again on the final short stretch to Hinkley and Trinity Marina, where I'd stop while going to the Crick Show. But coming along here, I became aware of an odd-looking boat, not a narrowboat, catching me up fast. Stick some blue lights on that, and you'd think the cops had caught up with me. Not quite, but close. It's the Canal and River Trust doing a depth survey. I told them I could save them all the bother because the entire canal is very, very shallow and needs dredging full stop. They came past and agreed it's not very deep. Yeah, we've been, we can see that on the thing, yeah. It's been shallow the whole way down. Then, of course, I followed them for a bit. The sun was out again. This was a lovely bit of cruising. These lovely hire boaters are viewers of the vlog. Just outside Hinkley at this point, and this is where I moored before. Finally, I rounded the corner past the online moorings outside the marina. And went into exactly the same berth as I'd been on the last time. That'll do for this one. Cheerio.